uh, the last few hours and, and yesterday and the day before going through Ezekiel and um, and just in the last I don't know month lots of lots of stuff is um, coming to me about uh, you know this particular well however the Lord's working with me but I'm just sh kind of showing you as I go here what I'm uh, starting to see and understand better. So, the Christian church has a, I, even Judah, I think, I could say both ways, have an obscure concept of what's going on with the kingdom of heaven. And uh, these parables that Christ was talking about, uh, as, as it was prophesied that he was going to come, and bring light to dark sayings. He's talking about a ton of thing and tons of things <clears throat> in um, in the scriptures. And a long time ago, a, a man said to me, we were talking about uh, the knowledge of God and stuff like that. And he was he was one of these guys that follows Torah, but he, his nose was out of joint, and he was he started getting snide and whatever with me about uh, understanding um, Ezekiel's vision of the kingdom. I said, well, I don't really study that very much, so I'm not going to have any answers for you. However, it's coming to me now, and uh, I just ha happened, happened across it. So I'm going to just explain to you briefly about, about uh, a bit of my walk, and then uh, to elaborate on this, and I'll just expound on some, just the, just the relations even with me and my wife and whatever. But uh, one, of the, one of the main books that I studied early was Ezekiel but I haven't really gone into Ezekiel very much except for the things that I already I already knew pertaining to even what I was supposed to do um, and this is the part where Yeshua says that I give you meat in due season it's just another example and um, and my wife from her perspective she doesn't know the Bible very well and um, like the things she knows when she reads it is she says, Mark, I don't know very much, but I can clearly see we got to keep the commandments. She knows that, so that's a big load off of my chest because I don't have to fight with her about keeping the Sabbath and not doing these, these uh, pagan holidays and so on and so forth. She is a help, a big help that way. But she doesn't understand when I talk deep about the Word of God like I do with you guys. She does. She watches my videos sometimes. She won't anymore, but she used to, and they used to bother her because they would make her feel guilty. And, um, and that's the conviction we have on our hearts. She started realizing the things that she was doing wrong in her own, in her own heart and stuff like that. So she would confess these things to me. So, <clears throat> but that's the way it are. I watch my own videos too. I don't just, um, like I make sure I'm saying things correctly. And a lot of times I say the wrong verses and stuff like that. But, you know, there's a lot on my mind. I apologize when I do do that, but <clears throat> let me know and and then I'll make a comment but it also shows me how many people don't actually go and read these things and check them out at the same time so it's kind of a you know a tug of war there but nevertheless the point I'm trying to make and what I made with her the other day as I, I said you know I don't know everything in this book because that's not the way it works the Messiah is telling us to keep watching because as he he's going to keep it, the more the more you stay in the word of God, the more he's going to show you. And that's the way it's been. And I said, you've been watching me do this since we got married. You know, that's what my discussion with my wife is. So I don't know. I didn't know the things I know today that I, I didn't know them last year, what I know today, you know, and so on and so forth. I mean, you just, you keep learning and that's what he wants you to do stay in the word that's what it means right here i'm reading chapter 22 of matthew and then i'm going to go to ezekiel and i'm going to try to show you guys something that just is kind of to me it's mind-blowing but having said that i was uh reviewing chapter 20 from chapter 20 to i got to 44 and it's all talking about the second exodus the things that are going to take place the the you know and, and the kingdom, in its reality, what's going to happen. Not the way the church explains it at all. And uh, again, I'm going to read this, this bit right here. 
Yeshua said unto them, this is the end of, uh, starting at 37, in chapter 22, And Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's the first and greatest commandment. That means you're doing what I'm saying you're doing. What I'm doing right now, by example for you guys, is what we're supposed to do. And then he gives us the meat in due season. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So you're supposed to go, what the, that commandment means is to go and tell the people what the Lord is showing you. And that's being a householder and giving meat in due season. And that's what we're commanded to do. That's why I just tried to explain to my wife, but she still doesn't understand that. And so people think when you're called to be a watchman that you know everything, and it's not the way it is. You're your heart's convicted to care about other people and give them the meat and due season when the Messiah sees fit to let you know. So right now, what he's showing me is the reality of the kingdom. But he's saying these things in parables. So he told you, all of us, that there, he speaks in parables that those with no ears can't hear. So when you read these things, in the when he's talking to people in parables... All, all he's doing is telling you and giving you a, um, he's giving you some hints about things that are already written, which is loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Because he sanctified himself in the word as well, meaning he knew everything in the, in the Bible. I don't know everything in the Bible. He did, but he's teaching us. And the way this Bible is laid out is just amazing. So this parable is talking about what's written in, his, in Ezekiel already. Okay, I'll read it to you. Chapter 22, starting from the beginning. And Yeshua answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth for his servants. And these servants are, are us, the first fruits, to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. So he's telling you what we're going to do. We're not going to come. Because we have better things to do. Again, he sent for, uh, for other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the, the marriage. But they made light of it, and they went their way, one to his farm, another, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and, and, and treated them spitefully and slew them. You see, now that what, what's that talking about in other places? He, he, he always expounds on these things. He talks about the evil servants that return to the drunkards. I, I mean, I'm talk, I've been talking to you about it in other videos. If you're if one of those people that actually keeps up with what I'm being shown over here. And... Um, and they start to smite their fellow servants because they are getting choked out by the briars and thorns. So some are going to go to their farm. Their farm is more important. And others are going to go to their merchandise. Their merchandise is more important. And they won't do the work for God. Even though they're called, but few are chosen. Few, in, in Hebrew, I always say this, in Hebrew, what, what a man taught one time, I don't speak Hebrew, but he, it made sense to me because of what's going on. He says that many are called and few choose. <clears throat> but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies to destroy those murderers and burned up their city. What does he say? He, he gathers the, uh, the tares first and they get burned. Okay, now this is, the, and in, when you go to Ezekiel 20, you're going to see as they're, the, as the second exodus is, is um, taking place, they come to the border of Israel and there's a slaughter there because the rebels get purged out. And, and I have, you know, I'm getting more and more uh, uh, um, an understanding that even the Chaldeans, it's, it's almost like, okay, the great horn are many daughters, Okay. And like, if you go to Isaiah 47, 48, 49, now this is a speculation, but it's, it's, um, but it's backed by scripture and you might see it too as a possible, good morning. It's a possibility. Okay. So 
when this second exodus takes place, well, it tells you that the whore is in the wilderness in Revelation uh, 17 and 18. Now that just could be, just mean the wilderness of the people, meaning outside of the kingdom. You know, obviously everybody's outside of the kingdom except for the first portion of Judah that, that came. Uh, but they're also doing a lot of things wrong and there's a... Um, there's a, the army is going to go up against against Jerusalem and they're going to get punished and that's when the a big huge um, the, well Mount the Mount uh, of Olives is going to cleave to you know I think it's the east and the west I can't remember if it's east west north south but I forgot that but anyways there's a big destruction there and uh, those there's a, a few of them there that are going to get um, that are going to have a s sealed on their forehead and they nothing will happen to them. But anyways, there's a big destruction there. That's that's uh, on a different side. But there's this exodus that's going to take place where everybody's going to come there. And there's also a, a gathering to Jerusalem where the house of Israel and obviously the house of Judah are going to get slayed there. There's a, a slaughter. And, uh, and it's called different names. I think one of them is called the Valley of De Decision. And these all take place, and you know, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around every detail and try to make sense of it, because what, you, what Ezekiel will say, uh, it, it's a, there's a little added differences that Isaiah would say. And so, and then, it, and then it kind of brings a clearer picture, or at first it will be a little confusing, and how does this really work? And that's and it's that's why the it's hard to go through the Bible and make sense of it, but he 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 gradually shows you more and more. So this is where I'm at right now. And you see the reason why we can see it because this these parables were meant to be understood in today because they weren't about any other time. You know, like the disciples of old may have understood them because they had the insight to understand, oh, that's the way they're gonna behave in the last days. Okay? But we who are servants are, are seeing the very thing going on right now um, where you might not, you guys might not understand this, but when you're working the, when you're working and you raise men up and you see that they, their, um, you know, their farm is more important or they're um, going and buying motorcycles and, and going to football games and stuff like that. And that's more important you see it take place in real time, what the Messiah is even talking about. And he told you this was going to happen years ago, 2,000 years ago. So they made light of it and went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So they're going to talk evil against these guys. They're going to go and, and start doing things. They're going to go to the right. They're going to go to the left. They're going to get all confused. They're going to get wacky. And then they're going to get angry. And they're going to have, you know, anger problems. And they're going to show their evil fruit. Like, and it it's already takes place all the time. I warn people all the time, don't do this. You know, the, I'm talking about the men that are rising up. And, uh, and I've been doing that. I did it for five years. I knew that already, but I just didn't really like when I saw it happen, I didn't think it was going to happen to these men because, you know, they were so wonderful at first, but they go up, uh, they get choked out. They're not see, uh, grounded in the word. That's one thing that causes them to fall, the parable of the seed sower, or they get choked out by the thorns and the watchmen are going to be surrounded by briars and thorns. And that's what, the, that's all of it's coming true right now, you know? So, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So if you're angry with your brother for no reason, that's murder. That's, that's why he says, says these things, right? That's what he's talking about even. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Now, reason why, why that, I'm, I'm repeating that where it says city because oftentimes when he says city, he's simply talking about a certain group of people. Like, for instance, the city of New Jerusalem is talking about the people, all right? And Mystery Babylon is talking about the people, <clears throat> a people, you know? And they, they, it sits on many waters. Waters is people. So it'll say that great city, but really, ultimately, that great city scattered through the whole entire earth the more and more I, I'm realizing more and more. Now, 
there may be a certain destruction about this, but let's imagine it like this. Let's say it is Jerusalem, but let's say that when the harvest workers, the servants go and gather all these people, they gather them to Jerusalem, it gets destroyed, mystery Babylon, but they're going to be a set, a set group of people that are doing what the Bible says they're going to do, the Chaldeans, okay? They're, that they get slaughtered. Now, that won't be the heathen roundabout, and it won't be the ones that make it into the kingdom, but the kingdom of heaven comes down to earth, right? So it's the great mountain. What the church doesn't understand is that they're in, they're, well, a lot of them are in for a big slaughter. And, and some of them are the ones that are going to be coming through the second exodus because they did it, they, God knows everybody's hearts. You see, there's people out there that had they, they're, they're being um, blocked right now, okay, by pastors uh, that won't allow the truth into the churches, okay? So they would, they, there's not a chance that they would do these things had they known. Now, God knows their hearts, you know. I wouldn't have, had I known when I was young, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that stuff, you know. And that's what it empowers demons to even happen in your life, you know. That's, that's what does it, you know. So, but they're in the churches, you know, and that's when the harvest comes. When the, when the, when the harvest workers come, it's going to separate the wheat from the tares. That's another portion of it. There's a lot of different names for the tares. They do different things. Some of the, some of the, or the, even the evil servants, they do different things. They have different, um, um, some of them are just lazy, so they, so they won't do it. Some of them are, are afraid, so they won't do it. You know, some of them uh, get envious, so they won't do it. There was one guy, he had all, I've said this before, but he had all this information to confront a very big problem, which could have saved a lot of people. And he just had a lot of knowledge about, uh, certain books, like I have knowledge about certain books, but I don't have the same knowledge he did about other books, right? <coughs> we only have our talents, which has been given to us, which is really God's spirit inspiring us to study uh, wherever he leads us. So we go. Well, this guy knew a bunch of stuff about how to confront BH BHI. And one of the other guys um, had the heart to go and save those people because he, he was a, a black man and he loved the people and he could see it. Well, the one guy wouldn't help the other guy because he, his, his words out of his own mouth was, well, if I go give you all that information. You're just going to take, do a video and take credit for it. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't believe I read it, but I couldn't believe it. I was so mad. That's the only thing that I've ever been mad about was that. And then, but I saw the guy's evil fruits and this was after he fell. And, um, and I just, I couldn't believe that. Like to be so that, that like, to the punishment for that would, is going to be excruciating. May God forgive him. But I couldn't believe that. I, I was just shocked, you know, very, very disappointed. However, it happens and it happens to fulfill prophecy. And what those people that fall, these servants, um, they should have been reading the scriptures about that, the possibility of them falling, but they took it for granted. And they, what happened is they were given all this, all this is, is it's elsewhere. It's even in, I, I did a video about it the other day, right? Yesterday, I think yesterday or the day before, but the, in uh, Ezekiel 34 talks about it. Like, and the, and it's like, Ezekiel 33 is about the watchman. Ezekiel 34 is about the servants, you know? And these servants eat, eat the word of God and they get fat. They're the fat cattle, but they won't, they won't uh, give it to others, you know? And it's just disgusting, you know? And I didn't really realize that, you guys, I'm telling you. I haven't reviewed Ezekiel in a long time. But when I, when I saw Ezekiel, some of the things I was going through and I was, I, I don't know if I was able to relay the, the meat that well, I might've been talking more of, you know, in a, in a, maybe you couldn't understand what I was saying, but it, it, it's hard to, you know why it's hard to relay the information that we see in the scriptures sometimes is because we are so knowledgeable about all the rest of it, this big, huge puzzle 
um, we understand other things, so it brings us to understanding, and then you finally get to these points where the you you um, you're fine tuning the story because it's really it's here a little there a little. You're bringing it all together, and it's it's hard to do. So sometimes you may not understand what I'm talking about because I know about a whole bunch of things in Revelation compared to something else. I know about Ephraim, I know about Manasseh and that stuff. So you might not ever understand, and I apologize for that. But it's that's the um, that's the, it, it, there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I do the best I can to sp explain things plainly. What's, what's, um, what he tells us in the darkness, we, we're supposed to tell in the light, which is what that means. But oftentimes it's hard. And, uh, you know, that's what Paul's talking about, speaking in tongues, speaking in a stammering lip. You're, it's edifying to God, but if nobody can interpret it between me and God, because I can hear it and see it, but if, uh, to prophesy would be to be able to explain it very plainly so people can <clears throat> so people can understand it. That's the lesson I'm seeing Paul's even talking about as he's really quoting Isaiah 28 to, to 33 when he's writing Corinthians. His mind, a lot of the time when he wrote 1 Corinthians, was on the lesson in Isaiah 28 to 33. And see what I'm saying? Like, if I... If I, I can tell you that, but you'd have to read Isaiah 28 to 33 and actually absorb it in order to see it in 1 Corinthians. And, and then you're going to have to understand other things to even see Isaiah 28 to 33. So it's, that's the way this Bible works. So it's, that's the, what I'm up against trying to explain to people, and that's why I talk so much. And I make so many videos of me just babbling on about this Bible, and hopefully somebody can hear it. Because all I care, you know what, I already know that his, his appointed men and women are out there. They just have to, that you, through the foolishness of preaching, you got to go and reach them. And this is the only way I can do it, you know, because who knows where they are. So I'm trusting that the Lord is going to guide people that are appointed to come here to learn. And I don't expect a lot of people. They're, my videos might get a little more attention Maybe if I'm dead or something like that, and the the oven gets turned up, but but um, but as for now, that's all in God's hands, and that, you know it is a little. When I when I pray and talk to God, I always question that because it's like, how come you show me so much and nobody listens? It you know it, it's just it it's uh, perplexing. But then you start to see that there's prophecy about that. You know, there's not you like like I said yesterday, First Corinthians one saying that and. And really even, even um, what it says about those with a little strength. And in the Old Testament, it talks about his seers are going to be hidden. And lots of different places you can see evidence of what's going on. But even as a servant, I still question, well, why does it have to be that way? You know, like I don't, I don't fully comprehend it, but I accept it. But I wonder about it. Put it that way. Because, because it's, it's like this is, the, this is the battle within me. This is, uh, he shows me so much and I don't reach anybody. I, I know, I mean, I'm reaching a few people, but I don't. And then when I do reach them, they fall. After they learn all this stuff, then they fall. But then you, you can see that's already in scripture that the watchman's going to warn, they're going to hear you, but they're not going to do what you say because their hearts go after their covetousness because they're surrounded by briars and thorns. So that's the warning. So, and it's just, it's just sad to see, but I have to accept it. But, and it also builds, in a sense, it builds my faith in the word of God because he keeps showing me his words just coming to life every single day. So I'll keep going on here. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. It's not a joke, right? Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. So these servants went out into the highways to gather together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with the guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not wedding garment on a wedding garment. And the wedding garment is the righteousness of God. Okay, and then the amazing thing, what I'm going to read Ezekiel 44, but I suggest 
if you're gonna if this is interesting to you go and read the obviously you should read the whole book of ezekiel but when you start i didn't i've never really studied the the kingdom ezekiel's vision of the kingdom but i was hearing things in in chapter 44 about this parable right here so he's talking and other things that were were jumping out of the pages at me when i was i was listening to it so i could hear it um but from from chapter 20 to 44 is what i was specifically going through and and you will you will maybe be able to hear what this parable is saying in the book of ezekiel because that he wants you he what this whole point in doing this his words were not in vain you know he wanted you to go and find out where what he's talking about in the old testament that's what he's doing and our churches today deter everybody from doing that <clears throat> they're in a lot those leaders are in a lot a lot of trouble for this they've changed everything now, now all these poor people think that they're getting pre-trib raptured to a galaxy far far away and it's all about the second exodus and people are going to live in the kingdom and the way it's going to be run by these appointed people to be in different levels i mean for crying out loud there's I'll tell you later, but there's something else I even saw in there. It's just amazing, and it just verifies the unjust steward as well. So, anyways. So those servants went into the highways and gathered together all as many people as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how comest thou hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him away cast him out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for as many as are called but few are chosen now this is common what he's saying there's different reasons for for, for people being cast out like when you if you do something evil to a servant, you're going to get cast out. One of these servants that are appointed in the last days, you're going to get cast out for doing that. That's another thing. I mean, like, if, you, if we keep... I've, I've done another video about these parables, but in a, from a different perspective, specifically approaching that whole thing. I'm not going to read 23, 24, and 25, but if you do read them with that specific detail in mind about the servants and people who get cast out, you should pay attention to that for your own, for your own, um, your own person. But let's jump to Ezekiel. So I'm telling you, Matthew 22 is talking about Ezekiel, um, um, about the kingdom coming. So when he's talking, remember how, when he's always talking about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, there's things in, he, there's things in, um, it's all things in the Old Testament already said. Okay? So the reason why he talks like that, and then when you start, when you find what he, <clears throat> when you find out what he's talking about, as he's, a lot of times he's quoting what's already written here, and but he's putting a little more of an explanation on things, bringing light to things, and really the reason why we, we know the servants are supposed to know this stuff and share with the others the um, in preparing them for what's co what's coming. So what I'm going to do, right? it even tells you to tell these people, I just can't remember what verse that is, tell these people about this, and I'm noticing that, and I think I'm going to be staying in Ezekiel quite a bit because I believe that, um, well, it started off with Isaiah, and I've been studying a lot of Isaiah, but now it led me to Ezekiel, and now I'm seeing it, starting to see things in Ezekiel. So uh, it's, this is a long chapter. It's longer, but I'm going to read the whole thing, I guess. Bear with me. You know I'm not very good at reading out loud, so. Then he brought me back way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh towards the east, and it was shut. Now, I believe that out outward sanctuary is the outer courts. I think. Then he said, 
Then he said, the Lord unto me, the, the way he was talking about, they, 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 um, the outer courts of the sanctuary, um, where the, the Gentiles were for 42 months. I don't maybe not though. This, this gate shall be shut and shall not be opened and no man shall enter in it, enter in by it because the Lord, the God of Israel hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince, the prince, he shall sit in it and eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of the, of that gate and shall go out by the way the same. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house, and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. Now, I'm just going to tell you, there is no such thing as, as a bunch of people escaping this earth. The kingdom is coming to this earth, and it's going to go the way the Messiah was, they, that's the problem. The whole entire church when it made up a Walt Disney imagination of, of um, all dogs go to heaven and the kingdom comes down to earth. And this is explaining that even this is after the Exodus is over and the watchmen are going to bring the people to Mount Zion. This is Mount Zion. And that's in um, Jeremiah 30 and 31, right? Like, all these things, it's Ezekiel also, it, it tells you in Ezekiel about that as well. Peace to you too, sister. Then brought he me the way of the north gate, I already read that. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thy eyes, and hear with thy ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord, and all the law thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house with every every going forth of the sanctuary. And, and thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you all of your abominations in that you have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. Okay, here we go. Like, are you kidding me, right? You know, every time... You may not know this, but the word Gentile and stranger is the same thing. So today's church sits there and say, says that they've that that um, the kingdom's been given to the Gentiles and been taken away from Israel. They replaced them. All right, that's dispensationalism. It's the dispensation of grace to the Gentiles, which is true, but the Northern Kingdom of Israel was booted out, and they are the Gentiles. And they're scattered into the Gentiles. But there's a select group called the elect that's going to rise up in the last days. And there's going to be other people going too. But they're just not appointed in the same things. There's certain people that God, God has ordained for other things other than reproducing in the land. Like people are just going to carry on living. Not all are going to be are going to be in the in the kingdom some are going to inherit the earth you know some are going to be outside the kingdom and only going to come in once once a, a year at tabernacles so people have a obscure concept of the way the kingdom's going to be because churchianity went and told them a bunch of lies and allowed them misled them and led the witness to you know in the wrong directions you know and that's why everybody's full of lies and it's all confusing because God's not the author of confusion. If we all were to have studied this word and, and Pastor Bob was actually a good guy and taught us to follow the Ten Commandments, we would have received the Holy Spirit of truth when we were kids and we would have learned through our whole life the truth rather than lies. But the, the great whore and her many daughters has to happen and, you know, the... The, the remnant rising up in the last days has to happen, and that's us. That's what's going on right now. And that's why we proclaim the gospel. Everybody in the world wants to live in their covetousness, and that's why God is not, God is, not, is at enmity in the ways of the world. And this, all their abominations the house of Israel has is because they learn the ways of the heathen, the Gentiles, the strangers. 
So, okay. In that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread and fat and the blood and have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. And this is the kingdom returning. They don't, they think that right now the church thinks that they don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, which is the covenant. So you see, they're going to be shown these things and they're going to learn the law at Mount Zion. And you have not kept my charge of my holy things, but you have, you have set keepers of my charge in, this, in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus says the Lord God, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh, neither enter into my sanctuary. If any, if any stranger that is among the children of any stranger that is, is among the children of Israel. Now, do you, do you think that they have to get their penises uncircumcised in the flesh? That's really not what it's talking about at this point at all. He says you've got to put off incorruption, your, your corruptible bodies. You know, that's the flesh. And the Levites that are gone away, and, and it really had to do, it had you had circumcised the foreskin of your heart, then you would have been in the position where, where you were um, in your glorified body. Because remember, the 144,000 are already in their glorified body at this point. Okay? And the Levites that are gone away far from me when Israel went astray, which went away from, from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary." Having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house, they shall slay the burnt offerings and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them, because they ministered unto them before their idols and, and caused the house of Israel to fall in, into iniquity. Therefore, I have lifted up my hand against them, says the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. This is at the kingdom. So what do we got to picture? Let's picture it. The kingdom of, um, of God comes down. Those who dwell in the kingdom are the man-child already. Okay? That's not just men. It, it, men and women at that point, way back at the sixth seal, doesn't include women and children. Okay? They've been glorified. That's what I can see. If it's just men, it's just men. But I can't see that because it tells you sons and daughters. Okay? And it tells you that their, their children are going to be saved and stuff like that. So it's whoever those people are or those people. But then they guide. You can see that they are with the second exodus, guiding them through the wilderness, probably protecting them from everything that's going on around about. They're a, a, a light on a mountain. And he makes the path straight and they walk all the way to the border of Israel where there's a great purging, Ezekiel 20. We're all the way at Ezekiel 40 now, or 44. So what I see happening here is people living under sacrificial law. If they're in the kingdom, they are under the liberty. And that's the promise to Jacob. All right? And, and whoever, something happens in the, during the exodus where people are made, are made pure somehow, I see them getting their glorified bodies. They'll get changed at an instant. And then the others are going to, looks like they're going to be living under sacrificial law. And that is why there's going to be kings and priests ruling over the people. But the people are going to inherit the earth. That's why they're even there. I, it's something like that. I'm trying to paint a better picture. What we're going to get to a point, if you've watched my videos, when I tell you about the unjust steward, there, we are not supposed to be, if we're listening to the full instruction of God, we are not supposed to be doing the feasts until we receive our inheritance. This is the kingdom coming. Watch what it says here about, it verifies what I'm saying again. And I just never noticed it until this morning. And they shall not come near unto me, 
to do the office of a priest unto me to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed, but I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof, for they all shall be done therein. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to near to me to minister unto me and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood saith the lord god this might be right here talking about even the evil servants that wouldn't do the work they may be under sacrificial law as the priests possibly where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth they might end up having to go through life doing sacrificial law and doing all the slaughtering themselves I'm just saying that could be what this is talking about. But the Zadoks, they were they were telling the people the truth. They were the ones that were called. Well, we let's say they were called the the um, faithful servants. But the evil servants get and they remember what he says that you uh, one place it says that you will in no wise be released until you pay everything. And I think that's possibly what's and he's talking to servants when he says that. So. I'm sure he was talking to servants. So that tells me, you know, there's this is a bigger picture than I'm glad to see this stuff. It's giving me a better visual of what what's really going to go on because I've been suspicious about this. I've been talking to one of my sisters about it and I think a brother or two, but I've talked about it with others in the past as you see um okay, what did I just do the other day about the video? The children of the promise or the children of the bond woman the the, uh, the unmarried woman are not going to rule with the children of the promise okay <clears throat> this is what it's talking about they're going to have a job to do it looks like but they're not going to rule they're going to be ruled over they shall end they shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me and they shall keep my charge these are the these are the wise servants right here and it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court they shall be clothed with linen garments and no wool shall come upon them while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within they shall have linen bonnets upon their head and they shall have linen breeches upon their loins and they shall not gird themselves with with anything that causes sweat and when they go forth into the outer court even into the outer court to to the people they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered and lay them in the holy chambers and they shall put on other garments and they shall not sanctify and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long they shall only pull their hairs neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court neither shall they take for their their wives widow nor her that is put away but they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of israel or a widow that had a priest before see there's marrying going on right here these people are not they didn't inherit the kingdom they they didn't inherit the kingdom this is this is this is right at the at the end of the second exodus when everything when his judgment comes down and this is the things that are going on and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane or maybe maybe it means something else maybe it is isn't it i don't know if that's actually talking about the 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 good guys or the bad guys because they're not going to marry so that christ told us that he's quoting the book of enoch when he says that you do err in the scriptures so i got to dig into this a little bit more and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane. So obviously, everybody's doing profane things right now. You see, they're going to learn the law. That's what happens. When they go to Mount Zion, they're going to learn the law. The Christian church has no clue about this, but that's because they don't know the law. And they're being, they're being told by Pastor Bob, oh, the law is done away with. That's not true. You know? And, they, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. In the and in controversy they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgments and they shall keep my laws 
and my statutes in all my assemblies, and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. This is just, this is end days right here. This is when the kingdom comes. And they shall come at no dead person or to defile themselves, but for, for father or for mother or for son or for daughter and for brother or for sister that hath, hath no husband, they may defile themselves. Now, some weird stuff even written here, but you guys got to remember when, when Messiah says that if you profane or if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit in this life or the next, you will not be forgiven. See, part of profaning the Holy Spirit is one of the, you can read this in Matthew 12. If a servant tells you something and you call them a fool and you go against them and they are actually a servant, that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that speaks through that man or woman. Right? That's part of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The other part of blaspheming the Holy Spirit is saying that it's just God's favor or we're saved by God's favor. Because Yeshua is literally quoting Jeremiah 23 about that. And it's all about saying the burden of the Lord. And he says it in enough times that people should catch on to that. So in this life or the next, and this is the next, the millennial reign. So people can sin in the kingdom when they're not out, when they're outside of the kingdom. If they're not dwelling in the kingdom and they dwell in the land, it's cap they're capable of sinning. There's another place that tells you that too, that, that um, drinking sour wine sets your teeth on edge and you will be um, killed. And that's talking about in the kingdom as well. And that sour wine is going to idolatry. And after he has, and after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. And in the days that he goeth into the sanctuary, into the inner court to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, says the Lord God. And it shall be unto them for an inheritance. And it shall be unto them. For an inheritance, I am their inheritance, and ye shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. This is a different group of people. They shall eat the meat offerings and the sin offerings and the trespass offerings, and every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. And the first of, of all the first fruits of all things, and every oblation of all, and every sort of of every sort of your oblation shall be the priests, and ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your your dough, that he may cause the blessings to rest in thy house. The priest shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself, nor torn, whether it is be fowl or beast. Okay, sorry, I thought it was in Isaiah 44, but let's keep reading. This is Isaiah 45 now. And this, Isaiah 40, or sorry, Ezekiel 45 establishes even more that you are not supposed to do these feasts until you return to the, your inheritance and they're sanctified. That was the message. There's a lot of people that are not listening to the full instruction of God. They're being presumptuous. That's going to be reasons why they themselves are not sanctified because they weren't listening. They're casting stumbling blocks. These people may be, that's maybe their punishment because they, they were, when you impose, you guys won't ever hear me imposed on anything other than if you keep the two covenants of promise and love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor as yourself, those are the fruit, the tree starts to bear fruit, okay? Be patient with yourself. Yeshua is patient. If, but if you do keep those covenants and you do love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, you'll dig into his word all on your own because his spirit, not on all on your own, but his spirit is talking to you and it's drawing you to him. So you want to go into the word. That's what happened to me. I'm explaining it to you as simple as I can. If it's happening to you, <clears throat> that's God doing it. If you don't have faith enough to follow him, you're going to stay where you're at and you're going to find yourself in a big problem later on. If you 
dig into his word yourself. You don't no longer have to listen to me. He will show you himself. You, you will start to learn things in the word of God. Now, it might take you a while. You might go very quick. I've seen it happen many times already. When somebody, I see the Holy Spirit working in a man, but they start to learn and then they crash and burn. And others are just, they start to learn and they just keep going and going and going. Isaiah is a good example of that right now. You know, he just keeps going and going and going. And Christine is another one. Those are the closest to me. And I've, and they, and, and I have things to do because I got to talk to you guys. So they're, and other men, they're, they're, they're growing and growing and growing. There's another guy named Antonio. I can tell he's learning things because he gets excited about certain things that he's discovering. When you get excited about the things that you, you know, the Holy Spirit's talking to you. That's why you're by faith. It's not by your intellect. That's what people go in error. They start to go to the right because they'll start saying things like, oh, well, look at what this says. And then they don't understand what it even means, you know? And then they start to not mix wool with linen or they'll, they'll start the prohibition. The, the Christians did the same thing. They went to the letter of what Paul was talking about or Yeshua was talking about, um, about alcohol, when it was talking about the drunkenness of whoredom. Because everybody knows what, what drinking is, it, what it does. It, you know, whether you, whether you, um, you, everybody I'm sure has been drunk at some point, especially when you were younger or whatever, right? You, that's what, that's the way God uses to describe the apostate church, but they're drunk in their pride and in their covetousness and they're, they're stubborn. Okay. They won't repent. It's the spirit of whoredoms, the drunkenness and it's error and error sends you to the right or the left. Judah's drunk too in their legalism. They don't understand these things. They take it by the letter of the law or, they t or they're lawless, but it's still the same problem. It's just same poop. It's just a different pile and it's both stumbling blocks. That's why people can't hear that they, they don't have to do the feast or not supposed to do the feast is a better way to put it. I'd like to do the feast, <clears throat> but God doesn't want to do it until this takes place. Moreover, <coughs> when you shall divide your lot, lot, the land of your inheritance... You shall offer an oblation unto the Lord, a holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be the holy, shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. Okay. So say one of you guys is Neftali. Okay, you get appointed your inheritance, your Neftali. That's where you're going to go with all your brothers and sisters of your tribe. This is the city that he establishes within your borders where he's going to put his name and then you can do the, the feasts again. They're going to be sanctified. They're going to be all these priests that are going to be appointed over you are going to teach you how to do them and they're going to be a joy and a celebration in the kingdom. Pastor Bob ain't going to teach you that. Even the Torah movement isn't going to teach you that. Not when they're going to the right, because they're not listening to the to the unjust steward. What what the unjust just steward's gonna know. They're they're on all all the guys that are in the Torah right now are the unjust steward. But they gotta repent of that and then get commended and start teaching the truth. Quickly write a check for half. That's the preparation as we go in. But that's gonna be something that well, it's gonna play out. You know, I I can see it already. It'll play out because those who have no guile in their mouth are the unjust steward. So no guile. They're not ca casting stumbling blocks. God made all this provision because he knows how difficult these times are going to be for us. We're scattered to the four corners of the earth for crying out loud. He knows that. I mean, they should catch on to that. But instead, they go and get presumptuous and they're all gathering, but it's not unto him. That's what it says. They're going to gather, but it's not unto him. So you'll see people doing that right now. And, <clears throat> and they don't even know that the Sabbath begins at dawn. They won't, they won't do it. They're even doing things like Hanukkah. You know, they, they're just going full board. or full, oh, They're going right to the traditions again, you know. Because they think in their own mind that that's going to save them. And that what's saving them, what's saving people right now is God's Spirit is teaching them the, full tr the truth about what's going on in prophecy. 
It's don't despise prophesyings. The prophecy is this is what we're, we're supposed to be waiting for, the patience of the saints, you know? So anyways. Okay, so establish this city, okay? And this shall be for, for the sanctuary 500 in length and 500 in breadth, square round about, and 50 cubits round about for the suburbs thereof. Suburbs, the surrounding people, right? That's the city in the middle, wherever it's set, where his name is going to be, and then we can do the feast. And of, the, of this measure shalt thou measure the length of five and twenty thousand, and the breadth of ten thousand, and it shall be the sanctuary and the most holy place. It just proves it right there. The holy portion of the land shall be for the priests, the minister of the sanctuary, which shall come near to minister unto the people, and it shall be a place for their houses and the holy place for the sanctuary. And that's all I want to read about that. You know, like it, to me, that was amazing. So you could go to Deuteronomy 12 and Deuteronomy 16 to, to um, make sure you understand that part and that I'm not lying to you. Because back in the day, they were told they're going to get kicked out. And, that they're, and, and there's even mentioned, don't add to my word or take away. And that's what's going on right now. People are taking away from it. They're taking away the instruction that once you're kicked out, wait until this event happens when the kingdom's restored, when Messiah comes to run, run the world, you know. And um, when he does that, then he's going to appoint different priests and people to, to, sanctification is important to God. Everything has to be holy, has to be, there's no, no unclean person will be in the kingdom. So, so, the people are going to learn the law from the Lord at Mount Zion. He's going to teach everybody and it's going to be, we're going to be getting purified. The people will be getting purified and learning his ways. So there's a group that there's going to be a group that's going to be, um, um, more, I don't know. There's, there's a group that's going to get purged out. There's a group that's going to be, um, in uh, resurrection. There's a group that, Obviously, by the time they go through the second exodus, they've, they've made themselves pure. They, um, there's going to be a group, even when it says that he's going to take, take the stony heart out and put a fleshly heart in, sometimes I wonder, is he going to cause people to do sacrificial law? It tells you already, like there's, there's going to be this, the millennial reign is going to be, a, the full mystery of God's going to be revealed at that point, when it comes, at the seventh trumpet, right? And then... What else can I say about that? There's the de details are very, very different than what anybody teaches in the church. That's all I can say about that. It's uh, it's showing there's going to be law and order in the kingdom, but it's going to be great. You know, it's going to be great. The children will be dancing. You know. Now on the outside of the kingdom, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, there's going to be weep. There might be weeping and gnashing of teeth even to the evil servants because they they missed their chance to be part of the kingdom and they're going to have to, part of the the kingdom kingdom because they they knew better they knew better and now their punishment is probably is going to be having to do the slaughtering what happens i i can kind of see that what happens if the evil servants have to go out into the rest of the world and anybody who's doing evil, they got to go slaughter people, you know, and that's their punishment. And they got to pay that for, for a thousand years or something like that, or the rest of their life. Maybe they don't get, they don't, they, you know, they don't get a glorified body. I don't know how his punishment's going to take place, but they may actually be just simply cast out, or maybe they do get burnt to a crisp. And um, it does say they, they get burnt. The, the tears in the church, um, you know, weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't fully understand the, the term. It's an idiom, obviously. I haven't found it in the, in the Old Testament. It hasn't jumped out. I've been looking into the definitions of the words to see if it's just the way the, the New Testament translates it. If anybody has access to the original original Hebrew manuscripts, 
if, if you have the original, not something that's been translated from the Greek into Hebrew, but actually has the Hebrew manuscripts, um, I'd like to see what weeping and gnashing of teeth is in Hebrew. The actual words, you know. So that would be a nice favor to me if anybody has that. You just put it in the comments here. Um, anyway, so that's what I saw. That's what I noticed. I thought it was the, the interesting part is most interesting is more for the people that continually watch these videos um, each time I make them. And you can see the progression going on right now. Um, how I've been talking about the unjust steward and that's a verification there and it's in uh, Ezekiel 45. And that just jumped out at me, and it's very interesting. The, the concept of the kingdom is what I'm also trying to get you guys to go and, and look at. Um, the concept of the kingdom, you'll see, is very different than what the church tells you, you know. So, an understanding that there's different groups of people appointed for different things. So, remember when Christ says that the, 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 the servants, a servant does nothing, will not be called a good servant and he will, the, when he, he says that you're faithful with little, I will give you much and you will rule over much. The reason why is because you actually care for people. That's what Messiah wants. He wants you to try to care for people. And then because you care for people in this world, in this toilet bowl, and you go and try, he sees that and he says, I'm going to make you uh, in charge of other people in the kingdom because of what you did with no power. I'm going to give you power now. And that power will be because his the ones that he appoints, priests and kings and so on, queens and stuff like that, will never ever want to see sin again in the kingdom. And they're going to, they're going to make sure that they do their part. They're going to know what to do. They're going to be given the strength and the power and the understanding and everything to keep sin out of the kingdom and and they they're gonna have a job to do there's gonna be maybe there's you know when the people are outside the kingdom i'm hoping that they have uh, opportunities to come into the kingdom and maybe that's what they're going to end up doing is going out and trying to get the people to to because there's there's uh in the old days there was um you could see that some people would come and be so, um strangers with the israelites but they weren't allowed to be even grafted in until I think, and I, I might be wrong on the numbers, but after 10 generations, they could be grafted in or after four generations, I think it was. So when you see the hope in, in, in salvation for people, then that's what, that's what I know. That's what God is looking for. Otherwise he wouldn't show me things, you know, but what, what you see with evil servants, the ones that I know, they, they don't care. They don't care about other people. Even if they do the work, it's only because of their own self, you know, where they don't genuinely care for the people. And, I, and I've seen that. You know why? Because they have to say hard things sometimes and they won't do it because it makes them look bad. And that's, they, they're not looking at the, the, the whole perspective. Um, and that is, is that there's a whole bunch of people that are destined for destruction. They're going to hate what we say. But it's the ones that are God's chosen people that will not hate what we say. That's the point. That tells you right there, because when you know what the prophets already say, when you, especially when you're warning about people's behavior, then what the Bible says about people's behavior, it's already prophesied. So when you go and proclaim what people are doing right now, and uh, uh, you know, bringing it to their talking in their own language, in their own unclean language. They, uh, they don't like hearing it, so they uh, rebel against it. They can't hear it, you know? And that, that just shows you who the pots for, fitted for destruction are, and you can't get away with it, you know? You're not even supposed to question God about that, you know? They, just, they expose themselves for your, for your growth in faith, but it's also showing you how terrible it is that you were involved in that sin yourself in the past. So... And that, and you're people once they once they repent, a lot of them, a lot of them, think that's as far as it goes. They did the full duty, and then even when they say that, and they were unprofitable, it, I can't remember where it is. I think it's in Luke. 
But that's <laughs> those who say, oh, we did the full duty, meaning they kept the Ten Commandments, they're hewn down and thrown where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, <gasps> what? Yeah, because they wouldn't fulfill the royal law. And that is to go out and rebuke because they didn't want to, they didn't want to stand out and they didn't, that makes them uncomfortable because of their own pride. That's what happens. And then they're the unprofitable servant. That's another thing that makes them un unprofitable. So there's a lot of warnings. See, before that second exodus happens, you got to understand a bunch of people are going into that second exodus that don't know what me and you know. So what's happening before the second exodus? The calling for the first fruits. The first fruits standing with, with Christ. They're the ones that get pre-trib raptured, but they turn the people to repentance. Do you, that's how it works. So it's taken me a long time to be able to explain it that way because I was learning how it works. But now that we're getting closer, you are called right now. The tree's got to bear fruit. If it doesn't bear the fruit, it gets hewn down. Because you were ultimately called for, called for this calling. And then, once the church goes, those, but your position will be higher in the kingdom of heaven. But the other group of people is going to be a lower position, and they're the ones going through the wilderness. So they're the ones that are not going to be in, they're going to inherit the earth, not the, not the kingdom type of thing. Unless, I mean, I guess I suppose they can repent through the, through the second exodus. I don't know. There's, there's more to it, but you'll see that there's people even cast out on the outside of the kingdom. It says, and they will not enter into the borders of Israel. There's a certain group and they're not allowed in. They, they, uh, they are out, they're outside of the wedding. That's why even it says to the harvest workers in the parable we just read, in Matthew 22, you know, go out and just get the good and evil and bring them in. So, are you talking about 1 Corinthians 6? If you're talking about 1 Corinthians 6 and 7, about marriage, that's talking... That's talking about the key of David. That's the purpose of what, what his message is. The reason why, when he says it's better that, I, it, he teaches it by permission, first of all. Yeshua taught the key of David as well, and he says this is not for everybody to, to understand or hear or receive, which is all means the same thing. But when Paul's teaching the key of David in 1 Corinthians 6 and 7, that's why he says, everything is lawful for me on the Sabbath day, but it's not expedient. That means there's going to be people that think that they can, you know, they have the key of David, and it's just so that they can break the Sabbath day, but for their own purposes. And that's not what it's for. It's for the purposes of God. So... So that's, um, that's the key of David. Because you can break the Sabbath with, and be held guiltless because everything is lawful for you. Uh, um, it, you, you, you can't break the Sabbath if you have the key of David. And that's why he says, I would that you remain like me, which is single, because it, it's a lot easier. Because then he goes on to say, but if you marry your virgin or consummate the marriage, which is just, it's just funny to me. You know, like how people think you got to go to a Christian church to get married. No, you get married by having sex. That's what it is. That's the consummation of the marriage. And it's right there in in, in um, 1 Corinthians 7, if you can listen to that. But anyways, when, when you marry your virgin because you're lusting after her and she's lusting after whatever, man and a woman are lusting after, they're burning inside for each other, you're not sinning in, in consummating the marriage. But that you fast is what he says. It's not talking about food. It's not talking about food. It's talking about the three-day fast to keep yourself holy. You're holy in the sight of God when you keep that fast. And it's one of the, it's one of the most amazing things that God wrote in his word for people who, it shows you who truly has faith. If you can hear that, you know you're walking with God. You know who your brothers and sisters are. And I'll tell you something, that the men, there's, 
two men that fell for sure that I know, and maybe even the third, there's three guys. One, one maybe didn't fall. Maybe did, I don't know, but I don't pay attention when they do, they do. And there's nothing I can do about it. I've prayed. I've forgiven them for what they did to me, but I mean, I just see too many nasty things. And when they do it, it's just, you know, it's hard, but I know two of them denounce the Kia David now, and they used to have it, but because their own covetousness in their life and their, and their errors and their, uh, it is, it's, it's always covetousness, whether they covet your knowledge, whether they covet the authority that you have, whether they, they covet, um, even having, you know, they would rather have sex with their wife and ignore the key of David and not realizing what they even did. Maybe they, you know, other things. Once the covetousness kicks in, both of them deny the key of David now. And then they preach against it instead of, <laughs> it, it just blows my mind. That's, and then people should have saw that as a big fat sign, you know, but that's, that I can't make people wise, you know, it's their own, it's their own doing. Are you, you know, if you're going to be, people are warned not to be deceived. I'll tell you not to be deceived. There's a lot of things that can deceive people. And usually what happens with people is that they can't see their own sin. And so they... Yeah, they can't take, they got to take the log out of their own eye and then they can see clearly, you know? And so anyway, this guy, this is what happened with these two guys and they denounced the key of David now and it's one, it's the most amazing gift. So there's going to be a day where they are going to be weeping because they did that. It's going to come. It's going to be to their shame. I can already see it, you know? So that's what it is. 1 Corinthians 7 is teaching about, um, is a teaching married couples that they keep that fast and um, they keep the fast and um, to, to continue in the key of David, you know, because he, he was explaining that. So, and that, uh, and he's talking to these, the, the people who know, so. Because, I mean, not everybody, it's not for everybody. It's, it's, he teaches it by permission. But, I mean, certainly to go and start speaking evil against it and say it's not real, that's a, that would be a huge problem. That, or that is a huge problem. Because, you know what, when guys are doing things like that, they're robbing you of what God's word says to you and the promises that he gives you, you know, of, of holiness. This certain ho holiness is, uh, is a great did you see what we just saw in the when the kingdom comes about people who are not holy? That's um, people who are not holy um, are not going to be in the in the part of the kingdom. What is what's going on here? Key of David, Scripture, First Corinthians seven, Matthew twelve, First Samuel twenty one, Exodus nineteen. It's also in Joshua chapter six. Joshua chapter 6 is talking about it. Um, there's, uh, it's Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 22, uh, specifically verse 22, but you can read the whole thing. Then you can jump up to Revelation chapter um, 3, verses uh, 9 to 13 or 7 to 13. I can't remember. It's all about Philadelphia. And then the, the reason why it's important, it's to the, it's those who have brotherly love, right? The brotherly love is sharpening iron with, it's talking to the servants, okay? You got to understand that revelation is written to the end day servants. That's who's going to understand it. And whether you are or not, I can't determine that. But if you're, if you're pricked in your heart to study this word and you really want to know what God wants of you, then the likelihood you are, remember, there's going to be, I'm going to tell you this. There's going to be 11th hour harvest workers and they are very special to God. And me as an old fart, I expect to raise up kids to go and start reaching some of those branches 
and getting the word spread out. As long as you guys all understand, the majority of people are going to ignore you to their shame, but they might be saved. And when you're wise enough to, to see that, you're putting yourself out there, you're letting them punch you in the face, but it's because you're giving them the opportunity to hear because one day they're going to say, oh my goodness, that kid was, or that old ugly guy or whatever, was telling the truth, and then they have that opportunity to repent. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for them, even though they hate us. You know, they will hate you. They will hate you. But they have that opportunity to repent. And, and, and on having said that, if you're one of those people, always go to Deuteronomy. If you want to end an argument or uh, um, whatever you want to call it, you know, when you're trying to reason with somebody and pull them out of the fire, um, end the conversation with Deuteronomy 4, 27, 31. Just say that. You just remember Deuteronomy chapter 4 in tribulation. If you, because if you don't believe me now, then go read that when you're in tribulation. Because they're going to remember it when they're in tribulation. They're going to be, oh, what did that guy say? Deuteronomy 4, why? Then they'll read it and they'll like, when you're in tribulation in the last days, like I warned you, if you turn and follow my commandments, I will show you mercy. You see, it just, just that chapter right there destroys all the false, all the false uh, teachers out there. So you got to put yourself... Be wise and put yourself in the situation when you're preaching to people, knowing that most of you guys that watch this video are not going to listen to me. So I tell you, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 27 to 31, will tell you if you keep his commandments during tribulation, when you're in tribulation, he will show you mercy. And that message is going to get out there. Otherwise, he would have never wrote it down. And because he wrote it down there as a warning, he... He knows that some of his people will not understand until that time. Yeah. Deuteronomy 4, 27 to 31. It's uh, very important. Right? You see, that's why we're servants. We, we see these things. We understand that people are not going to listen. But then there comes a point, And we're at the time, so it's coming soon. And, and um, yeah, we're doing it for their sake. And they don't, they don't treat us very nicely. Yeah. I, I, I kind of laugh. I said it in my other video. When you, when you go and you give them righteous judgment because you understand. And then they, then they judge you and say, don't judge or you will be judged. But they're actually judging you when they, when they say that to you. That's a commandment, right? So they're enforcing that commandment in their misinterpretation of it. Well, you're telling them to keep the Sabbath and not to do Christmas and Easter. And they're saying, don't you judge me. Don't judge me on the holy days. That's not a holy day. That's a holiday. And that's a pagan holiday. It's not a holy day. But that's exactly, like they're, it's, that's called hypocrisy. You see? I would say, well, I want you to judge me. I certainly want God to judge me. Judge me in your mercy, not in your wrath. You see, that's, I can't remember what verse that is, but it's somewhere. Something like that. You know, I might have misquoted it a little bit, but, you know, that's what we want, the judgment. If you don't judge, you will not be judged in righteousness, you know. You'll be judged in the way you judge. That's the problem, you know. So it's going to go into sacrificial law and at judgment day, and there's no way I want to go into sacrificial judgment. I want to go be judged by the Holy Covenant, you know. When you look at the, the Bema Seat judgment... Return to the first works. The latter works are better. Don't tolerate Jezebel. Um, show brotherly love is basically what it's saying in there. Um, you know, the hidden manna. If you, if you knew the hidden manna, you would understand all these things, right? And then, and that's the little secrets that are in the Bible that are covered up in such a way that you know the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. And Christ is the manna, right? I am the manna that came down from heaven. And I will give you remembrance to everything that I said. So what's he, what, we, what we just learned today, hopefully we, what we learned today, is the comparison of Matthew 22 to Ezekiel 44. But in, I have to tell you, though, you're going to have to go read 
all of that stuff and there's no way I can make a video and read Ezekiel 22 to 44 when I don't read out loud very well as it is. You guys got to read yourself, but that Matthew 22, all those servants and the, all that, all those parables about the kingdom, all of them is what I'm actually really trying to promote to you. Read those parables if you're inspired to do this and then read Ezekiel 20, maybe 17, maybe the whole book, you know, but just... Because I tell you this first, when you're reading the book, you're going to be listening for what I just told you, okay? Or you're going to be listening for what Yeshua tells you in those parables. Then you're going to be, you're going to have a big smile on your face and you're going to feel a lot more secure about your salvation. That's what happens. That's the fruit, you guys. The fruit. Please understand. Like when... Peter was feeding the sheep, feeding the sheep, feeding the lambs. And this is what he tells you. And the knowledge, okay. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of, of God and of Yeshua our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto all unto us all things that pertain unto life and god godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue so it's through his knowledge you guys whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and vir to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience, okay, so to, to knowledge temperance, and, to, and then patience. See, now you're in the word of God, and you're learning more and more and more, and you don't know this, don't be presumptuous. Just be patient, let him show you more and more. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. So, agape. But brotherly kindness, that's how you end up receiving the key of David. But you got to be doing it. You're going to have to receive it and do it. I mean, it's Revelation is written to the servants that will do what is written in this book, in the book of Revelation. All right? They will do it. The prophecies that are in that book, and one of them is the key of David. So if you don't do it, and I know one of these guys, he would do it when he felt like doing it, and usually it was so he could take a flight to go do a business deal somewhere. And that's, that's, uh, that tells me something there. For if these things be in you and abound, they make, they make you that you should or shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua Messiah. So that's the fruits, you guys. He promises you that. So you understand, that means the Messiah is going to talk to you. So if you obey the commandments and you direct your heart that way, you're going you're gonna to learn things in the word of God. That's the knowledge. And when you learn what the knowledge is, the knowledge is to be applied. So as you see, the things I say to you is... The words that come out of my mouth is because of the knowledge that he's given me to say to you. Now, at times, I, I mean, I can only speak in, in like that stammering lip that nobody can understand. That's not, blah, 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 blah. no, it means it's, it's just, it, it, there, even the fact that I, I'm being edified myself, right? So, but I don't have enough information to be able to fully explain, which is, is called um, prophesying. You know, so I, when, I, when I do, when I am able to explain, that means that I have enough details already to explain it. And that's prophesying, causing people to repent. You enter into the work of the prophets. They were all to John. The prophets were until John. You enter into their work. They already did the work. You reap what they sow. It's all been written down. Nothing. There's nothing in there. It just is hard to understand. And the reason why people don't understand it, first of all, in the Christian church, they don't understand it because they don't obey, so they don't have the Holy Spirit. You'll never understand without the Holy Spirit of truth. 
and the time, even the word worship, worship in truth. Well, they don't worship in truth. They're in error. You know, they think worship is singing a song. Well, that's praise. Worship is being obedient and showing it and, 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 and digging into his word. The elevated commandment, loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind means to learn what the prophets and the law says, not assume what it says. Like you have to do the feasts. You need to learn what it says. So depending on where you, what dispensation you were in, if you were in the time before Messiah, you were to do the feasts in your, in your inheritance. Judah, all the time they were in their inheritance, were supposed to do the feasts. And the northern kingdom of Israel was to do the feasts forever. But they got booted out, so they're no longer allowed. And they just can't hear that part of the law today. And so what they do is they cast stumbling blocks. You know? You know, like, I saw the name Tobit come up. Well, the guy goes to do the feasts, but obviously he wasn't, it wasn't sanctified because he touched the dead body and he didn't end up doing the feast. They don't hear that part, you know. They can't hear it. Can't hear that part because it's, it, the point that they should have heard was that it's not sanctified. That's why when they go to the kingdom in Isaiah 44, 45, that the city of their inheritance is going to be established and then they're going to start doing the feasts again. Deuteronomy 12, Deuteronomy 16, you know, Isaiah 43. I have not made you serve me with my feasts, but you cause me to serve you with your sins. Isaiah 1, Isaiah 66. They're going to do the feasts. They're going to glorify God, but it'll be to their shame and your joy. Isaiah 66. That's another place right there. It's just terrible that they won't listen to the full instruction of God. So what they end up doing is casting stumbling blocks in front of the children of Israel when God said, quickly write a check for half. I made it easy for you to return to me. He gave the servants the feast, the calendar, and all that stuff to draw them to the, the bullseye of the Torah. And the bullseye of the Torah is that you fulfill the royal law. And the fulfilling, that's why there's going to be no guile on the unjust stewards' mouths because they were wiser than the children of light. And that's what's going to make them the 144,000. It depends on what, the, I mean, it's, it's all over the place, even what's going to happen to these guys that go to the right or the left. No, this is the path. Follow, it's in the middle. You know, this is Isaiah 20, 28 to 33. Follow down that middle. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. Who's going to tell you that? The watchman of Ephraim. That's why John 10 9 to 11 quotes Ezekiel 2 and 3. He'll prophesy again in front of many nations once again. Take the children to Zion, giving them the meat in due season. I commanded the porter to watch. That's what has to happen. Otherwise, the Bible ain't true, is it? And don't think that the people who are appointed don't know who they are, but they're supposed to be raising up others to do the same work. And tell the truth to the people. And if you cause a brother to repent, you cover a multitude of sins. That's why the unjust steward says, my goodness, I'm going to get kicked out of this job of being a servant. What should I do so that they receive me? Quickly write a check for half. That's the repentance. It's a hard thing to do for prideful people to repent. Not realizing that people... They, that these things, these calendar and the feasts and the Paleo Hebrew were meant to bring you to understanding, but they stopped their ears from hearing and they went on the wrong path, thinking that they're going to achieve their salvation because they get the calendar. Even in Jubilees chapter six, the wise ones are going to realize that the calendar is all messed up, you know, and that the Sabbath was the day that was made holier than the, even the high Sabbaths. It's a message even in Jubilees. It, it's everywhere through the Bible if people listen, you know. But that's the difference. This is eight years running and thousands and thousands of hours of staying in the Word of God and Him, him showing me what's right and what's wrong and then to pass that information on to people. I know a lot, even the calendar, I, I know a lot about the calendar 
and I can see where everybody's going in error, but I also know that's none of my business. The Messiah or God, the Father, is going to correct his calendar when he said he was. Again, back to Isaiah 66, you know, at the end, at the end. That's not what's... God is going to be teaching us these things. He wants to do it. He wants Messiah to teach us the law. That's why we go and we hear the whole thing. That's why sacrificial law is going to, going to mean something more once, once we get to the kingdom and the, the things that are going to be performed. The feasts will be sanctified at that, point, at that point. Right now, they're not sanctified, even in Judah, really, because they are going on the wrong calendar. What did Christ say about the Feast of Tabernacles? I come to say that your ways are evil. They can't hate you, but they hate me. They'll receive you, but they're going to hate me because I come to tell the world its ways are evil. And he was talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. Why? Because they were in error. Because they were Babylonianized, you guys, in Judah. That's why Messiah did the Passover the day before the Jews did. They ended up actually hanging them on a tree on a high Sabbath day. You know, that's the, that's the irony of it all. You know? So, and that's the point. You see, when you can start seeing all the errors that people were doing that were already recorded in Scripture, but they're so, nobody can hear it. Do you get it? It was the way the apostles even wrote the Gospels. They were pointing out their errors about things that you're going to learn in the Torah and in these removed books. And it's right there in the New Testament telling you the same thing. Like that the day begins at dawn and that the the you know, the Passover is over the first two days. It's the 14th and the 15th of the month. And the preparation day was at the begin during the day. They were allowed to go make preparation on the first day of a two-day, the two-day uh, first day of the, the first day is over two days. But it starts at evening of the first day. And it's the 15th, but it includes the 14th of the first day as well. So it's just incredible. Like these little details, you actually have earballs to hear because you got the Holy Spirit of truth. You can hear the full instruction. If you stop if you stop listening, then he will retract his spirit from you. That's what's going to happen, okay? Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3 verses <clears throat> Be warned about this when you see guys talking that it, that if they're looking for vain glory and not to save your um, save you guys and help give you the knowledge for for your sake you know some people are just making mistakes because because they're just not there yet but if they if they can't if they don't want to hear it you can tell i mean i mean it's just it's a heart condition and i can't question the pots for destruction the vessels for destruction so i just tell you that for your own warning watch people looking for their own vain glory a good a good indicator is a nice fancy jacket and and uh cuff links and you know, things like that. There's not, that's not what's going to be telling the truth. So, all right. So I hope that inspires you to go and check out the parables about the kingdom and what Ezekiel 20, at least from 20, so, so on, um, says. Okay, well, I'm going to let you guys go.